Sports Moves, always appreciated. Episode 196 of the MLS Aces podcast. This is your host, Tom Sweezy. It is another glorious episode of the podcast. Um, I do not have to record by myself this time and lose my voice after a few episodes, so that's a positive. Let's hope for no technical difficulties like, like last episode, but let's hope for that this time. Um, but like I said, I'm not alone today. I am with Sam Nelson. Sam, how are you, bud? That beer looks delicious. That beer is fantastic when it's this hot outside. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It is good. Good to be back. Anything uh, new, fun, and exciting happening in life? No, uh, just taking it one day at a time, just working hard, drinking hard, <laughs> watching soccer hard. EPL starts back up this weekend, so yeah, uh, you know I'm going to be getting up early. Exactly. It's time for the full days of soccer when you get EPL mm-hmm. in the morning, MLS at night, and everything else in between, right? Yes, those are the those are the best days. Um, have you heard of the TV show The Good Place? So I've heard of it. I heard it's really good, but I haven't watched it. My girlfriend started randomly watching The Good Place on Netflix this week, and okay. I'm like hooked to it right now. So the soccer watching has taken a step back in oh. some in some minutes due to this. Just I mean, I really like the show. There I don't go. know. I really right. didn't think I would like it because it's kind of weird, but it's kind of just like weird and funny at the same time. I don't it's know. Kind of but, like Ted Danson, right? Yeah, Ted Danson. Okay. That's yeah, cool. Right. We, I, my wife and I were watching uh, Outer Banks. That's our show. Mm, got you. I, I mean, that's a good one. You need a good couple show. At the end of the mm-hmm. day, you have to have one, or else. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. What do you What do you do otherwise with your significant <laughs> other? Sometimes Especially, watch TV shows and not talk. <laughs> Especially during the past, you know, over year of yeah. quarantine and COVID and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Right. They won't watch soccer. <laughs> <laughs> I get about one soccer game in and then I I flip to the next one and she goes, oh my God, there's another. And I'm like, there's like eight more. So you get like, ready. Do you just want me to like, you know, text you the schedule in the morning so you know where <laughs> I'm at? Because like, it's, it's a big one. Like, Montreal is playing Minnesota tonight. I'm you telling should, you. You I'm should download, <laughs> download the Fat Mob app because really yes. like, that's how I stay on top of it. So you no. need to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, if you are watching live on August 12th or listening to the podcast the day it drops on the 13th or whatever, um, there has there is some MLS teams in action tonight. There are. There is. My English isn't good. But um, first off, I guess we'll go with the League's Cup. Uh, Orlando City, they are taking on Santos Laguna tonight in the League's Cup. Maybe they have a little bit better luck than NYCFC and SKC because uh, not great performances there. I feel like we've talked about this before, but Sam, what's your just super quickly? What's your opinion of the League's Cup? Because I feel like every single year when the League's Cup just randomly comes around, we say this, but yeah, but we just have to go with the opinions again, I I guess. I think my opinion's that of um, the Sporting Kansas City coach, (laughs) which was, I don't give a fuck about this game, and we're going to play the USL side. Like, you're in the mid. I don't know. I can understand if the League's Cup was something like, it was almost like a preseason, but like that was what yeah. started your season. But yeah. this is the middle of August. The The grind for these last couple of months is going to be pretty brutal for these teams. And you're asking, you know, four of the better teams in MLS this year to just take time to play, you know, four of the best teams in the closest regional league to us. Like, I think that's very difficult. And um, if you don't take it seriously, like, you know, Kansas City did and you get smoked, like it is what it is. Uh, or you can take it seriously like Seattle did and um, just beat down on a really good team. So I don't I, – I feel like there hasn't been an in-between point yet. Maybe that was NYCFC. Like, they tried, but, like, maybe they didn't care. Like, I don't know. I don't really – like, I didn't watch the games. and I, Like, I saw the highlights. They were fine. <laughs> so I, I – my, my, like, I – pretty much agree with you i don't i think the league's cup is just pretty much like a money grab between mls and league and mechies oh yeah I, I get it right at the end of the day it draws numbers it draws attention i get it until we win until, it until we in win then it, like, it is the number one trophy actually i think we've won the league's cup i think atlanta we, united won no or that all was, right, cool. the, that was the campione's <laughs> cup I don't oh yeah fucking, we, we won that cup i don't know whatever <laughs> but um like at the end of the day, 
everyone who kind of throws out the opinion of like it matters because it's other club teams in our region and we should see how we perform against it or it doesn't matter it's a money grab and it's bullshit and i don't care fair, it's not like officially sanctioned by Concacaf, so like it doesn't yeah. it's just a glorified club friendly it, it, it's it's an exhibition right what my whole take on it is whether you care about it or you don't care about it, these are still the games that are put in front of these players and in front of these teams. And results do matter, right? Like if NYCFC won this entire thing, I would be thrilled. Like I would love <laughs> it. Like you, I would be saying, like, you know, just we did it. We beat three Liga Mekis teams or two Liga Mekis teams and an MLS team, and we yeah. We have our first trophy in club history type of deal. I would be gloating the shit out of it. But at the end of the day, it's just like this is the this is the schedule put in front of them. These players are still professionals. They're going to go out and try their best and they're going to do their best. And that that's a it's it, it's a thing. At the end of the day, it's a thing and you have to accept it. So yeah. to give a quick little update on what's gone on, Sam, you already touched on it a little bit. Um, SKC. Even though Peter Vermees came out and said that we are going to fully give everything we have in this competition and in this tournament, he went out and he threw out Swope Park Rangers or SKC2, whatever they're called nowadays. Jaron and... Lindsay started. So that. <laughs> and that was the only name I recognized on that team sheet. I thought there was one like as like actual SKC guy, but whatever. Oh, um, it was Saloy, Saloy, I think, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah, no, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so SKC pretty much put out their second team and got smoked by Leon 6-1 or 7-1. One, mm. whatever the hell it was, six one by Leon. Um, and fans bought tickets for that game. Yeah, I think Andrew Weeby right. went to that game. Poor Andrew Weeby and his son. Um, but then you get kind of maybe a little bit better of NYCFC. They looked very good. I thought they were the better team overall in that game. I watched up until uh, Puma scored late in the seventy whatever minute. Puma scored and because it was last night and we had storms here and I was fighting to stay awake. So as soon as Puma scored, my head hit the pillow <laughs> and I was out. So I had to watch the rest of the game and the PKs today. And, you know, NYCFC got pushed to the, the limits. We're the better team on the field, but lost in, in PKs. So there's two MLS teams out. Um, Seattle Sounders, though, absolutely dominated Club America. Um, t T Grace, thank you. Sorry, because uh, Club America's <laughs> in CCL. Um, they absolutely dominated T Grace three nothing. It is. It was the official return of Nico Ladero. Like his banger was amazing, and he controlled that game. He is so good. <laughs> like, I, I don't even know what else to say. That that dude is great. Yes. Like, I mean, he was a Uruguay international up until this past year, wasn't he? So like, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he'll still get a game here and there, but yeah. yeah but like, I mean, he. He was legitimately trying to convince Luis Suarez to come to Seattle. Like, yeah. he, that is a good player. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I, my whole thing on Nico Ladero is like, I never, maybe there's part of me that never wanted to believe he was good as he actually was, right? But I think he legitimately has a shout for like best player in major league soccer because the <laughs> Seattle Sanders are good. They're very good. Very they've good. been, they've been dominant all season long without him. Now you add Nico Ladero and you see what he's been able to do. I have someone calling me on my MacBook. <laughs> you see what <laughs> um, he has been able to do in a few moments this season yep. and he dominates and that's just going to elevate the Sounders even more. And I, I just want to give Nico Ladero the love and the credit he deserves because the dude after this game deserves all the credit in the world. So oh, yeah. the Sounders, they're moving on to the semifinal. The other, and they were going to face the winner of tonight's game between Orlando City and Santos Laguna. Um, the other semifinal is Leon and Pumas. And then, you know, we'll see if we can get an MLS team in that final there. Um, any, any final League's Cup takes or comments you want to no. make? No, I, yeah. I got nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it is what it is. It's, we'll we'll, we'll cover it when exactly it's a thing. Yep. We'll um, 
Also tonight, the Philadelphia Union heading down to Mexico City. They are taking on Club America, the team that I mentioned before, in the CCL semifinal. Uh, I think last night or two nights ago, we had the other semifinal, the first leg of the other semifinal, where Monterey beat Cruz Azul 1-0. So That's just giving you that update there. Very good result for Monterey. Um, but tonight, like I said, the Union head down to Mexico City and will look to get some type of positive result or slightly not awful result um, up in altitude, right? Up in the Azteca. What is a result if you're Jim Curtin in the union that you're like, we want to come out of this game with like realistic, obviously you would love, yeah, like 10, nothing would love that result. But yeah. yeah. Right, I'll take that. What's a realistic uh, result you're thinking? Two, one. I think it's probably a fair result. You know, two one win or two one loss because there's a two, difference. Even a two one loss, like yeah. I, I think that no matter what, the union needs to snag an away goal. Yeah. Well, because we're, we're still doing that for this year, right? Like, and then we're getting yeah, away goals still count. Okay. So for now, good. so yeah, so definitely needs to snag an away goal. I think is the big thing, and even if you lose by a goal or you, you know one one, but like, I think at the end of the day, they need to get at least a goal. Yeah. No, I mean, I agree. I think you need to keep the game as close as possible yeah. and snag a goal. You're going to be I, dealing with some angry fans. So yes, you're going to be dealing with some shit that a lot of these guys may have never seen before. A lot yeah. of these dupe youngsters are going to get a taste of what soccer's like in Mexico. Um, but then you got obviously some other CONCACAF internationals that are mm -hmm. that are around. They've played in Mexico. They know what to experience too, uh, what to you know wait for too. So I think the union can get a result. I think, I best, think so too. Best case scenario that I can foresee is like a one-one draw. I think I mean, more. I think they all take that. I think exactly, and I think more realistically, we'll see like a two-one-three-one loss. But either way, I don't know if the union are making it past the semifinal, and that's not what I want. That's just what I'm. I'm educated, educatedly. That's a word. Educatedly, uh, that's my educated guess on, on how this uh, CCL will go. I don't think we're going to get an MLS team in the CCL final rendition this year. But Paxton Aronson free kick from distance. Hey, Paxton Ar Aronson can beat Matt Turner. He can beat anyone. That's anyone it. in the world. That's it. <laughs> All right, let's dive in quickly into some MLS All Star Game updates. Um, last week, when I recorded the MLS All Star Game stuff, was out there. Right, the team was announced. Yeah. Uh, everything was announced. I just. 30 minutes in of me talking straight and my voice was gone. So I didn't, couldn't talk about the MLS all-star um, team. I'm not going to run through the roster for the all-stars, but the roster to face league and Mac East all-stars was announced. Um, you know, I guess, Sam, I will give you your time to talk about the, your opinion of the all-star game. All right. Oh my God. The MLS like website is just, a bio of each freaking player. <laughs> this one like a website. quick cut and paste roster. Here's like two paragraphs on why Atto West is in the team. Like, if you go to the MLS, uh, you can go to MLSAces.com actually, Sam, and we have a new blog oh, out where you well, can. Uh, I'll tell you what. You can see the entire roster broken down for you. You know what's actually really funny is at this point when I type in MLS Aces.com is what comes up, not Good. MLS. That's how it should be. So, that's, That's how, how it should, should be. be. <laughs> uh, MLS versus MLS Aces. They'll look at the oh oh. This is the pictures are great. Yeah, okay. that was all. Yeah, there we go. All right. So so here's my thing on the um. Jesus, damn here. All right, now I'm pissed. So let's do this. <laughs> here's my thing on the All Star game. Yes, the All Star game is like one of the greatest things in American sports. Period. It is the one time when the game does not matter, and you have. Just your the two halves of your league put together with just these super teams. Like, I don't know, East versus West, like in the NBA back in the day before we started picking each team, which is a cool concept. Or um, in NHL, they used to do like Team North America versus Team World. And you had like Yarmir Yager taking on like Mario Lemieux. And it was just this yeah. crazy thing. Like, and MLS used to do East versus West. And I have been toying with this idea of a blog of, North versus South, or um, splitting it into quarters, and I think it's a great idea. I like um, North versus South a I lot. Think North versus on. South is different. Like I apologize, but go on. No, I think it's different. Um, I like it. But instead, MLS has been trying to capitalize on branding and push to get these European teams in for their preseason, where the preseason teams don't care. And now we're we're going to go and face a uh, Mexican first division, which is just a grudge match between like the two commissioners 
It's just this, this, the League's Cup, the Campeones Cup, like CCL, like everything is just a match to see if MLS has finally caught up. And every year we do it, every year we seem to get smoked. Um, will the All-Star game this year be different? I don't know. I also don't like the way voting happens. Yeah, I, I really dislike that it's just a popularity contest and you're really not picking the best players. Like, no offense, Pedro Goli should not be in this All Star team. No, but he shouldn't be. There's better. There's better goalies. The same thing happened. I think it was two years ago, my first time on this podcast, when I had to argue for Tim Melia, who statistically was the best goalkeeper in MLS that year, and he um he still didn't get in. And Brad Guzan started the game because Atlanta United fans voted more. And it's, yes. it's just this nonsense popularity contest. And then we do get, you know, Don Garber gets like two or three picks. And then um, the head coach gets to kind of round out the team how he sees fit. Like Gustavo Bo not being picked to this all-star team outside of the coach picking him. Ridiculous. <laughs> like, yes. And, and I think that I, I agree with some of the points you're making, right? I agree with how the MLS all-star game usually goes is – is shitty right when we were facing like juventus's c team or real madrid's d team or whatever it may be right like but ronaldo I, was in the stadium guys yeah exactly like, oh, not Buffon even was the goalkeeper like exactly no, no I, one cares. I, I agree i don't like it uh i didn't like that i like this rendition better because if it was just like mls all-stars versus club america i would hate it uh that I would mean, be bad uh, that would be awful. I think the fact that we're getting this first ever best 11, whatever you want to say, of one league versus the best 11 of it's another not, league. It's not that's, the that's best the problem, 11. And I think that if we did do like best 11, I bet you that um, Mexico comes out, or sorry, Liga MX East comes out with their like best 11, and it's going to be the best 11, not whoever a bunch yeah. of guys in Atlanta and LA voted for. Yes, I, I wouldn't I, be starting Nani in this game. I wouldn't be really, but no, I wouldn't. Not not when I have other options. I think Nani. I mean, Nani has to be. I think within the top four or five forwards this Nani season. super sub. Nani super I mean, sub. sure. Nani. That's okay, fine. so Nani deserves to be on the team, just not starting. Okay. Are, are we okay. still? Sorry. Also, are we still playing a three-five-two or whatever? No, Some there's random ass formation. I think it's a four-three-three. Good. They finally decided to do something like sane. We yes. were playing Juventus with like a three back formation when um who was it? Who was that? Zuzi. Zuzi was like our right center back. In yeah. <laughs> like this I, is all nonsense. That's why I like some of the changes this year. I like the all star team versus all star team aspect. Yeah. I like that during the fan voting, we they the league actually forced fans to vote for fullbacks and defensive midfielders. Yeah. Um, it's I starting like, the right direction. It's going in the right direction, and I do have to say, for the most part, the right 22, 23 guys made the all star team. Some picks, um, I do not agree with. Some picks are still questionable. But yep. for the most part, I think things are moving into a better direction if we want to keep this type of format going. I would love to see, you know, if it was something crazy like the MLS All-Star team next year takes on, like, the the Dutch All-Star team or something like the Eredivisie All-Star team. Yeah. Like, that would be sick. It's not going to happen. but It never happened, but it would be cool. I mean, okay, that's I mean, maybe like, just push to the CPL All Star team. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> I, I mean, but I love the Canadian Premier League. So yeah, no, I, I got <laughs> but you. But I just I, there's just something. It's so kitschy still. Like yeah, and the the point of the All Star game used to be, it it was supposed to be all the most talent in your league came together. And I, I heard someone talking about this a couple of weeks ago, and I thought it was the best way to put it, that back in, like, the 90s, when you couldn't stay up at night and watch, like, the Sounders play Portland because they had, like, a 10 p.m. game and it was only being shown on the West Coast. Yep. And But you always heard about, like, oh, this really good player, Raul, Raul Ruiz Diaz. You, you'll never see him play on the East Coast because of the way it was. Well, you got to see him in the All-Star game because it was played at 8 o'clock on a Saturday. Like, so you got to see that on your TV. And it was the one chance you'll ever get to see him. Like, I think that's cool. And now it's just become, well, you know, who do Atlanta, who does the Galaxy, who does Orlando, who do they all vote for? Yeah. And it's just like, um, it's just their entire team. And I, it just kind of annoys me. 
But like, I, it's good to see. Like, I think we're getting better. But again, I do this every year, so maybe one year it will be fine. And I do like that they're taking less percentage of the fan vote into consideration, and they're kind of mixing that with um, media and player votes mm. as well. I do like that they're taking steps in the right direction. Also, oh, um, Bob, Bob is going to rock this team. I think. I think this could be a good year. Yeah, Bob actually, you know, he was like setting it up for like the best eleven to win. Yeah, and Bob's the, actually going to win. <laughs> and Don Garber's down to two selections, so we're good, right? Yeah. We're getting better, but um, still, there there is obviously some misses right within this team. Oh, is yeah. there? anyone off the top of your head that you feel wasn't selected that should have been selected? Cause I have about two or three yeah, guys probably. that I feel were probably deserving to be here. But um, yeah, if you, if you have anyone that you want to stand for, please I, go for it. I think like in the moment when this came out, I did. And at this point, I've just kind of given up. I, I have a question <laughs> for you after, after we go through these names, but yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, to me, whatever. I'll go with kind of your take of Tim Melia before statistically the best goalkeeper, statistically the best goalkeeper in Major League right Soccer. Here. Brad Stuver for Austin FC should have Ooh. been with Matt Turner in this group of the Ooh. two goalkeepers. I like that. So whether did anyone from Austin? No, we did not. Sorry, what did you say? I was just looking to see if anyone from Austin made this team. And yeah, no one from Austin. There was, I think, eight teams that didn't have a representative. But um, Brad Stuver was my vote for a dude who I think clearly okay. should have been there with Matt Turner. But mm. my, just my take. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, do you have anyone else you'd like to throw in there as well? Um, I will just throw out Eric Williamson. And other than that, that is my because yeah. statistically Eric Williamson, uh, not always on the score sheet, but the what he's done to fill in at multiple positions and play multiple positions at a high level. That's just mm -hmm. my again Williamson and Stuver were the only two names that I was like. Huh. Right. But um, what was your what was your All Star game question or um, so <laughs> like you just said eight teams don't have players. That's always been something in like um, even in the Pro Bowl and NHL and MLB and stuff. Every team has one guy. Yeah. One, do you think that that should be a thing? And two, do you care? <laughs> because, like, for me, as an Orioles fan, especially growing <laughs> up, because we sucked up until there was a yeah. four-year stretch when I was in, like, high school and college, yeah. but the Orioles were awesome. But every year, man, like, All-Star game, I went, there's one guy, and that's our dude. Like, And yeah. I get to cheer for him in the All-Star game while the Yankees have five dudes that, like, are going to overtake us all. But I don't know. So, like, I, I was shocked only because I kind of forgot that MLS doesn't care about that. Yeah. I was like, there's no one from DC on this team. Oh, like, like we're up and coming, but we're not that good. <laughs> I don't care about if every team has a representative. Um, to me, that doesn't really matter. Do I think like would it be cool to see at least like one dude kind of get the 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 shine for their team yeah. to represent those fans? Well, especially like I mean, there's usually like one guy on every team who's actually having a good year while everything else falls apart around them. True. Or even if it is a good team, I think we have plenty of teams in MLS where there's no individual star, but there's yeah. a team group effort. Houston right. Dynamo, off the top of my brain, True. that will pull results but can you name a star on houston no you can name good players you have, you have like not. good players but you don't yeah. have like a star star exactly yeah, no, i agree with that so i think maybe soccer is also a little different what i would would if mls made that rule would i care no would it be cool sure but it's nothing that like grinds my gears or like tugs at any heartstrings i guess there you go I think I'm way too much of like an all-star game purist here. <laughs> I think that's, that is what this is coming down to. And thing? look out, look out listeners for my blog post on North South. Is, is an uh, all-star game purist the thing? Oh, it is now. Okay. Well, you, you are the original. I want my representative from Houston and my representative <laughs> from Vancouver. And like, I, want, I want Tyler Pasher, God damn it. <laughs> you want? No, because if for some reason someone from Houston made it on this team, it would be um, Tim Parker. Just because yeah, it's probably. someone that the league's all heard of. Probably. So, yeah. I mean, look, he actually also deserves it for the most part, too. I yeah, would well, be. yeah. But, but yes, no, I that got would you. would be the guy. Like, I got you. Um, like him, and it'd be like Andy Nahar from D.C. And Cavallini, even though he hasn't done anything this year for Vancouver. Honestly, Nahar probably deserves it. I think Nahar, like, could have made this team. But, like, he's been playing such a weird system this year that I don't think he would actually fit 
Yeah, I mean, that's also... I mean, Kyle Duncan for the Red Bulls. There's no Red Bull. Oh, yeah. Um, I like Kyle Duncan a no, lot. There is, isn't there? Um, Caden Clark is on this team, isn't he? No, Caden Clark made the MLS. That's Cade Cowell. That's yeah. what... There you go. Me the and CPs. Jason just... Whoo. We're back. <laughs> We're back. Um, just to quickly kind of run through, uh, MLS also... MLS and Liga MX also announced the Skills Challenge representatives. Love I'm it. so happy. The Skills Challenge might be better than the game itself. It is. It absolutely even though is. we only you had... You watch it. the Home Run Derby. You don't watch the All-Star Game all the time. But you, watch you watch the, the Slam Derby. Dunk Contest. The Slam Dunk Contest. And not the three-point contest. Like, yeah, no, exactly. You definitely don't watch the NBA All-Star Game. You watch the <laughs> Dunk Contest. <laughs> um, but, you know, just, just to kind of throw out a few names that I'm super excited to see. Obviously, we get to see um, Nani try to bring back that uh, crossbar challenge, right? That was big oh, from that, a few years was, ago. That was cool, actually. Uh, Carlos Vela, Rui Diaz, Chicharito. Rui Diaz. Ricardo Pepe is on that list, which is That's insane. surprising and cool. Like, yeah, I love it, right? Gonna... The, the Mexican-American, right? I like it. Oh, and then sure. for, for Liga MX, you got uh, Gignac, uh, Rodrigo Fuen, uh, Fuenes More. I just butchered that his name awfully Funes more Funes more thank you Jesus Orbelin Pineda you know you got a lot of big names from from Liga Mekis that are also going to be showing up in this I love it I think the skills challenge should be the main event and (laughs) only the main event but, I want goalie wars back. <laughs> it's brilliant. Goalie wars is like one of the coolest things ever. Guillermo Ochoa running at Matt Turner. Let's go. Is Guillermo <laughs> Ochoa on the uh, Mexican. No, I, I actually he might oh, yeah. be on the yeah, on the I've, team. Uh, I was. I, I'm only wondering just because they um he was just at the um the Olympics. I mean, Matt Turner was just at the Gold Cup. That's true. Uh-huh. That's true. And he is Let's, a stud. Let's get into some of the news. Um, I do want to say for anyone listening now or in the future, we will talk about games at some point. It has just been an absolute crazy. This is the slug of like the year. This is it. International competitions, yep. t- trades, signing. It's been crazy. So if you we like MLS, talk- watch the games. Exactly. <laughs> we, exactly. Watch the games yourself. We watch the games and we will talk about games eventually because yeah. it's just too much to talk about in a one week, uh, one episode a week podcast. But um, let's start with the only news that's going to be outside of major league soccer. And you you had a very good conversation point that I definitely want to stem off of this. And that is Werder Bremen selling us men, us men's national team striker, Josh Sargent to EPL side in Norwich city. Um, I know there was a reported estimated fee out there. I don't know off the top of my head, but um, like 10 or 11. I think it was like 10 or 11 million yeah. was the was the reported number. But um, for Bremen, Sargent was able to play in 83 games, score 15 goals in that time. And really, you know, I think be one of their better players for a shitty team that finally just got relegated to the two Bundesliga. Um, he was their top goal scorer last year, wasn't he? Yeah. He had like eight goals. Exactly. And he was playing like a tacking mid or like a false nine yeah. or whatever the hell he was playing. Um, but I like the move. I don't necessarily think Josh Sargent's ready for EPL defenses or some certain EPL defenses, but it will be a good test to see if he can produce and score at a top at a higher level. I don't know if he'll do it, but I am trying to stay positive. There you go. I like your positivity. <laughs> I'm, I guess, I'm yeah, concerned. your take here. Yeah, I'm I'm very concerned about this move. Like it's a, like look. Josh Sargent needed to be out of Bremen. He needed yeah. to play on a team with like good players. Here's the problem. <laughs> He's coming up to Norwich City, who are, you know, one of the top teams in England. They're number 20, probably. <laughs> and they are they are making lots of good moves this summer. They brought in a lot of really good young players. They, they brought in one of Sargent's teammates yep. uh, as well. And, and so, like, look, it's going to be a tough go for um for Norwich this season. But Sargent's also going to be just competing with Timo Puki, who will not be giving up that starting job. And from what I've been hearing, like or not that I watch a lot of Norwich City, yeah. but uh now you I, will. they put they put now I will. I will be watching a lot more. They don't play with two men up top, they play with one. Yeah. And so unless they change up that system, is Sargent really going to develop in the I mean like he's going to be training with better players, but is he going to develop when he's just coming off the bench for 10 minutes? Like he will next season when he's playing in the championship because Norwich went down, but 
Like, and I'm trying to be, wow. I'm trying to be high up on Norwich because like they wow. got Billy Gilmore and they got, you know, Josh Sargent and, and they just got this like super good. They, I think he's a striker. Um, they got this like amazing young Greek player who scored good. like the most goals and assists uh, of any teenager in Europe last season. Um, throw that. So in you, yeah, throw that in there too. So like, great. <laughs> so that's so Sargent's gonna have to put in that work and. Um, I just hope he's ready. I think he, yeah. I think he's excited to get going. Like there was a lot of talks over that last week in Bremen that didn't go well. Yeah. And um, but I think he's ready for this fresh start. And I mean, he's he's in the English Premier League now, and that's that's it. That's where we're at, guys. This Josh Sargent is an EPL striker. As a player, I think this is the move that this you're. This is the dream move. You're, you're always waiting for, right? That chance in the EPL, whether you are going to Liverpool or whether you're going to Norwich City, you're get you're trying to take advantage of your shot at the <laughs> most watched league, most popular league in the world. And Josh Sargent is going to need to take that shot. And I wish him the best of luck. I wish Norwich City the best of luck, and I want them to play well so that we can see Josh Sargent playing well and scoring goals. Um, well, not that those two things necessarily go together, but let's hope those two things go together. I hope for the best, but you exactly. know, they have, what, uh, Liverpool uh, week one, uh, then Man City, then Man United, then Arsenal, or like some nonsense. Like It's just they, Sar- they are starting on a shit foot. Sergeant versus Van Dyke is what we all want to see week one. Come on. That's what we want to see. I don't want to see. That. <laughs> um, want to see. Do you think wait. Sergeant could play out wide? Because uh, no. Matthew Hoppy, I didn't think could play out wide. Yeah, but <laughs> he turned into a pretty savage winger. Josh Sargent's like a six foot three, like big dude. Matthew Hoppy's not that, not that big, and I don't think he's that fast. Okay. Well. That was our only shot at him playing this year. So, <laughs> um, you had a point you wanted to make about yeah. about maybe the, MLSers, Americans MLSers overall, and just yeah. Americans in general. Uh, this has been such a crazy window, and all of a sudden, in transfer window, sorry, uh, and all of a sudden we've just got all these players in Europe's top five leagues, but also, you know, in other leagues like Belgium is not a top five league, obviously, but we have Mark McKenzie and now Sam Vines in Belgium. As well as other people being looked at over there, we have um, Chris Durkin. Chris, oh yeah, oh, shoot, Chris I forgot Durkin. about Chris Durkin. Saint Trudin, baby. Saint Trudin. That's uh, I mean, shoot, I miss I miss Chris Durkin on DC. Um, you know, uh, Chris Muller mm-hmm. went to hit or is going to Hibs. Like this is this was I think a big uh, summer for for MLS. And do you think? I guess this will be my question because I don't want to go through all of these transfers again. Yeah. Like. You know, Caden Clark uh, for two million to Leipzig, which is an awesome move. Yeah. Um, is MLS becoming a selling league, or do we just have all these talented young Americans all of a sudden that are cheap? Before I go into that, really quickly, one move that I have listed. So I don't want to go super deep into it, but uh, Dante Sealy is oh, leaving yeah, FC Dallas on loan for two years to go to PSV, and he's going to but- start off with their U twenty one team in the the second division in the Netherlands. So just throwing that out there. I'm just saying the like a, a two year loan, he, he's going. He's yeah. going to them. Congratulations to Dante there. Yeah, um, that's awesome. But do I think MLS is, I think MLS is not turning into a selling league. I think MLS is a selling league. Think? I think that was last the, season like this. I don't remember. <laughs> I think last season was almost like the start of it. Um, okay. I think the success that we've seen of a Christian Pulisic, I think the success we've seen of even a Serginho Dest. I know he's not coming out of Major League Soccer, but mm. every American that is doing well in Europe kind of raises the reputation and raises yeah. that price level of, yeah. of Americans overseas. Uh, I think Chris Richards is a perfect example of it, right? And FC Dallas overall is also a perfect example. Oh, yeah, they are. Whether you have a guy who has played multiple seasons with FC Dallas looking at uh, Reggie Cannon, whether you have a guy who's played less than 20 games with FC Dallas, Brian Reynolds, or whether you have a guy who just was in the academy, uh, Weston McKinney, they're all connected to that FC Dallas academy. They are all highly touted Americans and you have 
teams fighting over them. You have teams yeah. making bids over them. Whether it's the Bundesliga and it's um, Bayern Munich looking for the next Chris Chris Richards, right, or uh, Afonso Davies or whoever it wants to be, because you don't have to even con- hold that to Americans. Yeah. Um, you have a team like PSV who's at a different level than Bayern Munich trying to get that next big FC Dallas Academy product in Dante Sealy, who may not have the ceiling of Chris Richards, but guess what? He's an FC Dallas product. We're going to, the FC Dallas has produced all these products. Let's, so let's go see if we can get one. Let's go see if we can get one of those young, talented Americans. And that's where I feel like MLS is, right? Yeah. I think all of these teams in their own right need to kind of have that one successful sale for one successful player. And it, that builds relationships and that builds connections to Europe. Mm-hmm. We have teams who haven't sold players to Europe. We have we have teams who have not of those. <laughs> who, have, who have sold players to Europe and it just hasn't worked out. Um, but at the end of the day, these teams need to kind of do it if they want to build those connections. Yeah. If you don't care and you just want success in Major League Soccer, that's fine. That's that's how you want to operate your club, and every club operates differently around the world. But if you want to get in on this Dallas Union Red Bull train. You got to have that one sale, whether you don't get your price for that, dude. It uh, doesn't really matter. Have that one sale because the next two, three, four, you'll get your yeah, price. It's going to get better. Yep. Exactly. That's my take on, okay. on MLS. Yeah, I will. I will also say I'm very surprised that John Luca Busi only went for like six million. But he's I mean, he's touted in even in Europe and um, other things is one of the next big things. But going back to the point six. of SKC. They haven't really had a successful sale to Europe. Like, they I messed up. Know. They messed up the Eric Palmer Brown transfer oh, yeah, awfully. Forgot and, about that one. <laughs> and I mean, that was that's probably the only other transfer they really had to Europe yeah. for an American or even for a non-American, but for someone they developed. Yeah. And you know, now they also just sent Tyler Freeman on loan to the two Bundesliga. So like, yep. even SKC, yes, you maybe you didn't get the. Uh, the six million flat rate that you were looking for for Busio or whatever it was that they were that they were reportedly um, looking for, but yeah. guess what? That next homegrown through SKC, if Busio does well at Venezia, I mean th- yeah. that number they could get that number maybe much easier. Yeah, no, I agree. I think um, I was just reading today. I think the next one, next big one, uh, Kevin Paredes from DC United. So yeah. I'm throw that one in there. Uh, Unfortunately, as a DC United fan, going to uh, RB Salzburg kind of hurts a little bit. But what, like, what a freaking move that would be to get him in the RB Salzburg system. That's just jumping up and up and up. Love it's it. Also funny because there was also rumors like a week or two ago that uh, City Football Group was interested in yeah. this. Yeah, um, and they were looking at him, and um, oh, it was another one of our young guys. Uh, the D mid. Wow. Uh, Mo- Moses. Uh, yes, Nyman. 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 Yeah, because yeah, they were both at U.S. Men's National Team camp for uh, no good reason, but that they were invited. Yeah, because they're awesome. Whatever. Yeah, yeah that works. Good. You know, they're awesome, and I'm good with that, and I love that. And you know exactly. And you look at, you know, this is only the start of it, right? Like yep. Alfonso Davies a few years ago. Um, you know, even Josie Altidore way before that. They're one-off yeah. moves. I think Davies was honestly maybe the beginning of a modern era of MLS selling a player to a club in Europe and this dude skyrocketing, right? Not every transfer we have coming out of MLS is going to be the best left back in the world for one of the best teams in the world. That's just not going to happen. But um, Alfonso Davies kind of opened it up a little bit, right? And it opened it up for, okay, where did this guy who's playing at Schalke, who's going to Juventus now, where did he come out of? Oh, he came out of an MLS academy. He came out of arguably the best MLS academy. Let's go see what we can grab. Same with the union with Aronson and McKenzie and, you know, the the the, tr- the army of union youngsters they have coming up right now. They're yeah. going to make a lot of money on all of those kids if McKenzie and Aronson continue to play as well as they've been playing overseas. You know, it's... It's incredible that we are at this point. Would I like to see some of these guys play in MLS a little bit longer just for my own selfishness? Yeah, of course I would. <laughs> but the more money that these MLS teams are going to get for these transfers, sure, we're a selling league, but that's just gonna that just means more American talent being developed. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's where I'm at. 
Uh, oh, I, no, I don't use selling league as a bad term at all. I think it's a oh, great it's a good term. Thing. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, the Air Divisie is a selling league, and like they are just a fantastic league with good players and good talent and great yeah. clubs. So, like, I have no problem with that at all. And I, I just, I love what's happening. And I think this was a massive transfer window with guys going to Europe. And it, I mean, at least it felt that way to me. Like it, it's a big move, and I, I I don't know if we're going to see any more big ones coming up, but I, I have a feeling we'll see some more in the winter. Yeah, come January, we'll see. You know who who gets that move. You know, yeah. it's crazy. Like you hear these rumors every other week of like random MLS player X here is connected to Belgian, Dutch, yeah. German, French club X here, and it's just like, oh, okay, like. I, he's a good player. I like that player. Did I think yeah. he was like that good or he was going to have that connection to a team like that? No, but okay. Like I'll take it. And I'll take it. I, I like, I like that's the direction, you know? Oh, definitely. But uh, cool. All right. Cool. That I, I enjoyed that conversation. That Samuel. Good. I enjoyed it feels that. good. <laughs> Let's uh, dive into some high level um, oh. note, like moves here. It's in Let's MLS. It. And Let me we'll sneak wrap. up on the keyboard. Well, over here. We'll wrap things up with this episode after this. Oh. Um, but I guess really the main thing, I, the biggest piece of news coming out today, um, Atlanta United, they did find their new manager and they were able to lock down now former Seattle Sounders assistant Gonzalo Pineda. Uh, after four and a half seasons as the assistant um, underneath, uh, underneath, I think, two managers within Seattle. I know he had schmetzer and i don't know if wish siggy maybe siggy i'm not exactly sure but uh four and a half, gosh four was that and half only four and a half years ago oh my like, god i don't i'm not exactly sure Hold my on. my oh, concept of time right now is not great but while you look that up uh four and a half seasons with seattle he was in those four and a half seasons was able to make three finals as an assistant with the sounders winning obviously the 2019 mls cup um I really love this move. I know, Sam, that you have a little bit of a connection with this move because Pineda was also apparently interviewed by DC United this yeah. offseason before they hired Lasada. His name has been connected to multiple MLS teams year after year, I feel like, for the past few years. And the reason why I really like this move is, one, because Pineda, everyone says tactically, he's great. He's great in a locker room. Players love him, all this stuff. That's always a positive you want to see. And that's always something you want to get behind the way he talks about the game is also, I feel like perfectly connected to the way like Carlos Bocanegra and Darren Eels talk about how they want to operate Atlanta United, which I think is a positive two and three, like, I think especially with the success that Wilfred Nance has had up in Montreal coming from like an assistant manager in MLS getting his first job. I really want to see Panay to get this first job and do well with this first job. And yeah. if he's given the six, the, the keys to the car that every other manager has been able to have gotten at Atlanta United, I think he could have some real success with, with that team. Yeah, no, I, um, I really like Gonzalo Panay. I think it, well, for one, I think he was a fantastic player, but he also, um, I think he knows exactly what he's doing. And yeah. I think he he was destined to be an MLS head coach somewhere. I was honestly very upset when he didn't get the DC job. Am I upset now? Absolutely not. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but I think I think he's definitely I don't know. What worries me is is Atlanta United's fans gonna allow him to one, he's gonna have to learn. It's it's a different world in Atlanta, and he's a brand new manager who's never really done it on his own like this before. And so it's going to take, you know, hopefully not that long, but like a couple of weeks to really figure it out and get, get the team on board. But I think the team's ready to, to fight and win for him. And yeah. um, I just, I, I do look forward to seeing what he does. I don't know what kind of system he's going to try to play or anything like that, but I think this is going to breathe new life into an Atlanta team that freaking needs help. So, no, so this exactly. should be good. This is really good. And I, I think this is fresh air for everyone. And I mean, your point on Atlanta United fans, I think for the most part, from at least maybe the positive fans that I see, when they bring in a new player or a new coach or a new anything, they're behind them right away. They're very welcoming right away. Yeah. And I think they even kind of stretch out that welcome way longer than they should at times. Um, Frank DeBoer probably being one. I feel like they, maybe they, they kind of. I, I thought they kind of hated him pretty They quickly. turned on DeBoer pretty quickly. Um, I, 
I don't know. Heinz, I think maybe one before. Heinz, yeah. yeah. That that they maybe kind of held that on too long. But what what I'm saying is like I think they'll get behind Pineda. I think they'll like Pineda. He seems like a very like positive guy who everyone's gonna love. And with that fan base, I think it's honestly like a perfect marriage here. Uh, yeah. Or at least I'm hoping it's a perfect marriage, right? Because I do want to see Atlanta United play better. They do have players who are good, and I want to see in form and, and Joseph Martinez scoring goals. And to help out uh, Joseph Martinez and to help out Gonzalo Pineda, um, you know, within his first ever managerial gig, Atlanta United did sign a brand new DP last week before the Pineda hire um, within a winger, Luis Ari, uh, Araujo from Lille in League 1. Araujo was on the Lille side last year that won League 1. They also just a few weeks ago won the French Super Cup over PSG. Um, so, you know, <laughs> that's the last title anyone not PSG is going to be winning for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that was Sorry, messy. that was our messy talk. <laughs> pretty messy PSG. Yep. Right. Um but still, this dude has played a lot of games. At, I think he's like 25 or 26. 164 games played between his time at Lille and Sao Paulo before that. Uh, 22 goals and an 11 assists in his career. I have, like, he, this is actually one of the few cases, right, where we know the dude coming in a little bit more than some random small yeah. Brazilian or Ecuadorian team that we've ne- we can't even watch play, yeah. right? Yeah, I remember... I I remember watching Araujo with Lille because I was watching Lille for Timothy Weah. Like, I remember watching this guy play. He's a very fun player. He is a very good player. And adding him to this Atlanta United attack with a Joseph Martinez with what seems to be a rejuvenated Ezekiel Barco after the Olympics yep. could could spell some positives for Pineda within his first you know yeah. half a season as manager. Oh, yeah. And I mean, this is a big signing. Like, you literally just pulled a guy who won, you know, a, a French title, which is no small feat. Like, you, they, he was on a team that beat PSG out. And, like, that's that's a big deal. Yeah. And they brought they brought him to a struggling Atlanta team. That must not have been easy to to probably pull that guy over. But, you know, I, I think he's probably going to do a really good job for that team. And guys like him, like um, Soteldo on um, Toronto, yeah. guys, guys like that, like that, that, is exciting those those kinds of like brazilian wingers to me that's really awesome stuff i mean especially also after atlanta united like were openly failed at signing four other players Araujo is not a not a bad you know i was gonna say oh man number five really didn't (laughs) shit shit Uh, all right i guess i guess we'll take him i agree with you but like you know like even going back to our conversation before dudes like Araujo and sateldo and um you know i've whatever. There's probably others I can't think of on the top of my brain um, that just do help the reputation of MLS, right? Yeah, that bring no, this talent to major league soccer. That's going to help your team win. Um, these guys are going to look good and these guys are going to ve- develop. And that's really, you know, a- another positive of where MLS that's is. That's what but, it's all about. Um, I will go to one move that I really want to talk about. And that is where we're going on this one. the Rapids. We're talk- we'll-, we'll talk more Brazilians, right? Was not able to talk about this one last week because I think it actually happened the day after I recorded last week. <laughs> so it always after, does. after Sam Vines uh, made his move official to um, Royal Antwerp in Belgium, uh, the Rapids had zero left backs on the roster. <laughs> Sam, something you uh, have definitely there, mentioned a few times. There, there's depth problems. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> At least, you know, Kellen Acosta can play on the left and yeah, right can, in the middle. He can do it. He can do it. Can he do it elite? No, but he can do it. Um, you know, Austin Trusty playing a low left back too. But the no, Rapids, done. nope, nope, the, don't do that. Don't like the, that. The <laughs> Rapids did um sign a left back to replace Vines and at least have one on the roster. Uh they brought in a left back from Palmeiras on loan, Lucas Estevez. Um, the guy, super young player, first of all, I will mention that only 26 uh games played underneath his belt, but he's won a Copa Libertadores with Palmeiras. Uh he's won a Brazilian Cup as well. He's played in um, the Club World Cup. He's played pretty much wherever you're going to see Palmeiras, one of the best teams in South America, play. And I like the move. I like that the Rapids 
I mean, they probably they did what they had to do to bring this guy in, whether it was a loan deal or whether it was a full on transfer. They did what they had to do to get a left back on the roster, to get a talented left back on the roster and to sure. get a dude who will kind of play that Sam Vines ish role of being a little bit more defensive, but can push up and push uh, into the attack a little bit. I like this move. Estevis, I don't I'm not going to sit here and say I know everything about him. I know very little about him, but from what I've seen and from what I've heard and read, I like the move and now maybe get a second left back. Yeah. You definitely bring in another one. Yeah. There, I mean, yeah, I, the rapids are, are slowly edging towards better depth, but they just need to keep making some moves, especially if you're losing someone as good as Sam Vines. Yeah. But no, it's, it's, it's definitely a good move. I don't know anything about Estevez, but I will look forward to watching him play. Yes. And if you guys don't know anything about him, definitely just check out a few. Honestly, I'm not even making a joke about this one. <laughs> check out a few YouTube highlights because he's Those a very good fun player. Sometimes, though, like... His was fun. For a left okay. back, his was fun. That's good. Is there a move that you want to talk about on this list? Yeah. Oh, on this list. Uh, or talk not about... on this list. <laughs> did we talk about Ryan Gold like, while I wasn't on the podcast? A couple uh, weeks ago? I think we've mentioned him. Okay. I mentioned him last I, week. I just really like Brian Hall. I, I just think he, it was a really good signing for, for Vancouver. Like, my I God, agree. like what a steal. Like to, to be able to get a guy who realistically of his talent, um, who should have probably been at the Euros this summer, yeah. who can move the ball well between that midfield and attacking half. I think you know, they just lost Cavallini, so I don't know who he's going to be passing the ball to. But um, Brian White, baby, let's go. Oh God, I forgot about Brian White. He's played well. I he'll, he'll, no, he's but I played... forgot he was there. <laughs> oh, okay, I thought you were. I was going to say he's no, replaced yeah. Cavallini. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then there you go. I guess. But, um, <laughs> I think I think Ryan Gold like is is a coup for uh, for Vancouver of all teams to get. There you go. So that, that's know. my thoughts on that. I just was really excited when I, I like Ryan that. Gold. I haven't been on. I like Ryan Gold a lot. Uh, I wore uh, my White Caps jersey last. I week saw that. To yeah. Talk about it's Gold nice because jersey. I think the the Caps are. Uh, I think the Caps are making moves to potentially say try to save their season. I'll say that try to save their season. I think okay. I I want all three teams in Cascadia to be good. I like the White they Caps. truly hate each other so much. It's yeah. so fun. Yeah. It's so fun if they're all good. But typically, it's just Seattle and Portland, and Vancouver exists off to the side. So. I really want Vancouver to be good so that all three teams like are are playing each other well. I can 100% agree with you there. Um, there weren't a ton of moves, and I'm, maybe I'm happy there weren't a ton of moves that really like stuck out to me of being yeah. like, super sexy moves to talk about on the podcast. You know, like just recently before, not recently, just before we started recording, um, Ramon Abila went to DC. Like, Oh yeah. Uh, breaking news. Cause we're probably the first one to talk about it. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> Let's do it. No. Ramon Abila <laughs> went to DC United. Uh, they got him off waivers from Minnesota. I think they're only paying like 20% of his salary, which is still 200 grand, but um, it's, you know, that's another striker option for Lasada. Yeah. Don't know how he fits in behind the hot Ola Kamara right now, but I mean, it, it's, it's that, an option. That Ola Kamara goal the other night was freaking nuts. How about all the Ola Kamara goals that he has scored in the past? Just I don't in know, general, a handful of two months games. Even like, I mean, there've been I think it's like four penalties. So like, it goes from now like ten goals down to like six. But but it, all of his goals have been excellent. Like I can't, and I never expected Ola Kamara to be that good for us. I mean, so like, this is awesome. At the end of the day, you guys are playing well, and you guys maybe it's a system thing. Thank God. And, and but like maybe like the system is working. It, it just took th these players some time to yeah. to get adjusted to it. But you also, you know, I know this from real life soccer watching, and I know this from Football Manager. When you have a striker that's scoring goals, well, it makes things hot. a lot a lot easier to to get points at the end of just the day. Ride him, ride him through. It. Just force it. Just shove yeah, it in no, there like a round peg in a square hole and you just get as much as you can out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep going until it works. I don't care because, uh, you know, until he like breaks his leg. Oh, God. God forbid. Knock on wood. Um, yeah. We're just going to ride through Ola Kamara on this one. And I'm okay with that because the team looks great. Is there any 
team, player, anything around Major League Soccer that you want to have a conversation around uh, before we uh, we get we end this episode and get going. Oh, you know what? Just because I actually watched DC play the other night, um, and this I, I as a DC fan, I, I keep going to them. Um, Andy Nahar is freaking awesome, and I can't believe he didn't get um, that Bob Bradley didn't get more out of him in LAFC. Yes. Like it's kind of ridiculous that he didn't because he looks amazing and he's that playing is, as a center back. That has been my thought the entire time. I understand Bob Bradley bought it when he when they brought him in from Belgium. Like it, he was playing right back at, in Belgium. He, he yeah. brought him in as a right back, maybe to be that starting right back, and things just never worked out. But it's honestly shocking to me that a guy like Bob Bradley wasn't able to get the yeah. most out of a player. It's like, so weird. Right, especially a known commodity within MLS. someone that good, like yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, his loss is my game. <laughs> so it, I mean, he scored an awesome goal the other night, and he's just he he's doing skills I didn't know he could do at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's it's so. honestly crazy. He's dribbling around players. He's setting up players. He's scoring yeah. goals. He's just doing everything. And oh, yeah. to go to go back to our all star conversation again, I think he would be my all star from yeah. from DC and from that. DC if we were allowed to have one. Yes, um, we don't vote that well though. No, you got the fan base just uh, isn't the there. Fan base is just like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to one thing I want to bring up and my tweet is i'm not gonna meant read the tweet but i tweeted about this like a week and a half ago i honestly time is i don't even know anymore so it might have been fleeting it might have been two weeks ago (laughs) but the difference between 14th place in the east and seventh place which is the first playoff spot point wise is nine points the difference yeah. between 13th place in the West and 7th place, which is the first playoff spot in the West, um, is what? That is seven points. This MLS season may be about half-ish way done, right? About, yeah. But there's only a potential three-point swing from last place in each conference to making the playoffs, and that has me so excited. Like, oh, it's awesome. International competitions are over. Players outside of injury are going to be on their rosters for the time for the rest of the season. No, nope. we're about to get some of the best play out of some of the best players in this league to push for a playoff spot to then eventually push for the MLS cup. And I am so excited for how this has been, because even if you look at Toronto FC sitting last place in Eastern conference, they've played well, they've yeah. turned things around. The same for a Miami, a Cincinnati, a Chicago, a D.C. in the Eastern Conference. The same for a Austin, a Houston, a San Jose, a Dallas in the Western Conference. All these teams are finding some type of success somewhere. And that just has me excited because that means we're just going to get some of the best soccer we can see in Major League Soccer to finish out this season. And that has me pumped. And once all that soccer starts getting played again... We'll start talking about games. <laughs> so give it time. Hopefully, knock on wood, next week we next can start week. talking about more games yeah. and there isn't no giant MLS or U.S. soccer news break that we need to break down. Um, you know, uh, hopefully. I mean, if it's a good thing, I'll take it. It's a it. good thing. I'm cool. Like if, you know, Kevin Paredes gets signed by Barcelona. Oh, That'd be cool. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I would talk about Barcelona that. could afford to look at Kevin Durant. <laughs> <laughs> Not the way they're going. I just want to wrap things up with this episode with just a uh, quick little reminder that this episode of the MLS Aces podcast is brought to you guys by Added Time Outfitters. Yeah. So, you know, we all love the beautiful game of soccer, right? We spend countless hours talking about it, tweeting about it, discussing it, whatever it may be. And we all have our favorite memories from the beautiful game of soccer. Moments like Liverpool's uh, miracle at Istanbul, Celtics 2-1 triumph over that best Barcelona side, probably arguably ever, or even the U.S. men's national team winning, uh, beating Mexico in the first ever CONCACAF Nations League final. These are the moments that kind of keep us coming back for more and more every single day, week, month, year. But what if you could kind of wear these moments on your wrist all the time? Well, Edit Time Outfitters create soccer-inspired wristbands that let you wear those memories on your wrist. Each reversible elastic design gives the supporters of the beautiful game a unique way to represent their team and their country in some cases, right? So with wristbands from your favorite teams across Europe, 
Europe, the United States, and beyond. Each at a time uh, design incorporates a 90-minute story from that famous match on your wrist. I'm wearing mine. I got my New York City one on this week. Oh, and that. you guys can check out this New York City bracelet and all the other 25-plus designs that added at uh, at a time outfitters have on their website at www. They, okay, <laughs> even though no, even more, that's fine. You have more yeah. options to choose from people. So go over to additime.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at added time outfitters. Check out their new designs that apparently Sam just told me about. So thank you. Use promo code MLS aces, get 20% off your total order. Get yourself some wristbands from added time outfitters. Thank you to Ed Time for sponsoring this episode yeah. of the MLS Aces podcast. And if you guys want to learn more about Sam, learn more about myself, read our blog. Sam has been doing some blogging. I've been doing some blogging. You can go over to MLSAces.com, check out our blogs, check out our bios and everything else you're kind of putting out on the site over there. Also on the site will be a link to our Patreon so you guys can support us there for a very small monthly fee if you want to support us. If you do, you can join the Ace Holes, get in on our group chat, and talk to us more often. Talk to us about the whatever game's going on. Last yep. night we were talking about the League's Cup NYCFC game. I was fighting to stay awake and barely answering messages, but I was doing my best. So, But he was there. <laughs> <laughs> but I was there. Um, no, but seriously, if you guys want to support us, we greatly always appreciate anyone who comes on. Uh, if you're an ace hole, we will love you forever and I will have your back. I'll, I'll die for you. I mean, maybe not, but like, I'll support you R really your rider dies in that group chat. <laughs> I'll tell you what, <laughs> um, thank you guys for listening to this episode. Sam, do you have any final statements you want to make? No, I, I am good. Uh, in, enjoy the games this weekend. It's gonna. Yes. We're starting to get busy again, and I love it. Exactly. Watch your team. Support your team. Watch the games and uh, watch us next week or listen to us next yeah. week. But uh, thank you guys for watching, for listening. Peace out.